So here we are establishing a formula for curvature for computation purposes. Now I want you to note that since more often than not, we're going to want to measure the curvature of curves with arbitrary parameters, such as t. We need to establish an equivalent formula to the intuitive definition that we just looked at. So here is the theorem for our computation definition of curvature. Now we want to begin by letting vector r of t describe a smooth parameterized curve where t is an arbitrary parameter, any parameter our little hearts desire. Then the curvature kappa is defined as follows. So let's just quickly recall our intuitive definition for curvature is the magnitude of the rate at which the unit tangent vector changes with respect to arc length. Now again, we need a arbitrary parameter definition, and this is defined as one over the magnitude of the tangent vector with respect to that arbitrary parameter t multiplied by the magnitude of the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to that arbitrary parameter t. And of course, we can rewrite this as one single ratio. So this is the definition that we'll be using in computation for curves parameterized by vector valued functions of t. Now I want you to note that this is not an exclusive definition. There is an alternative computation definition that I want you to be mindful of. So the alternative definition for curvature is defined as kappa, which is equal to the magnitude of the tangent vector with respect to that arbitrary parameter t crossed with the second derivative of our vector valued function r with respect to that arbitrary parameter t. And this is all divided by the magnitude of the tangent vector cubed. And so oftentimes we'll rewrite this, we'll shorthand this as the magnitude of the velocity vector crossed with the acceleration vector, all divided by the magnitude of that velocity vector cubed. So these are the two definitions that we use for parametric representations of curves with arbitrary parameters. So let's go ahead and prove this. We need to derive where does this formula come from. So let's take a look. So here is the proof for our computation definition of curvature for curves parametrized by a vector valued function with an arbitrary parameter. So the initial conditions. We want to begin by letting c be parametrized by a vector valued function r of t for some arbitrary parameter t. We, of course, want to let S represent the arc length, and we'll let capital vector T represent the unit tangent vector. So to begin, we just want to think about what we know from the chain rule. So by the chain rule of single variable functions, we know that the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to an arbitrary parameter T can be defined as the rate at which the unit tangent vector is changing with respect to the arc length multiplied by the rate of change of the arc length with respect to our arbitrary parameter t. So using what we know from the chain rule, we now want to go ahead and solve for the rate at which the unit tangent vector is changing with respect to the arc length, as we established with our intuitive definition. So to do that, we're going to divide both sides here by the rate of change of the arc length with respect to that arbitrary parameter t. So this leaves us with the rate at which the unit tangent vector is changing with respect to the arc length being defined as the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to the arbitrary parameter t. And this is all divided by the rate at which the arc length is changing with respect to the arbitrary parameter t. And so this differential notation is equivalent to saying the following. So rewriting this in our prime notation, we can say that the unit tangent vector or the rate at which the unit tangent vector changes with respect to the arc length is equal to the rate at which the unit tangent vector changes with respect to our arbitrary parameter 
And now I'm going to leave the denominator, the rate of change of the arc length with respect to the arbitrary perimeter t as it is, because hopefully you're recognizing this from our last section. We know from the fundamental theorem of calculus and our arc length function that the rate at which the arc length changes with respect to an arbitrary parameter t is equal to the magnitude of our tangent vector. So let's use this and plug it in to the equation we have above. So we can say that by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that the rate at which the unit tangent vector changes with respect to the arc length is equal to the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to the arbitrary parameter t divided by the magnitude of the tangent vector, which looks awfully close to our intuitive definition. Right? We know the intuitive definition of curvature is kappa being defined as the magnitude of the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to arc length. So, to attain this equivalence, let's take our previous step and compute the magnitude. So, computing the magnitude of this, we have the magnitude of the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to the arc length is equal to the magnitude of the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to your arbitrary parameter t divided by the magnitude of the tangent vector. We can even say that that's kappa, that's your curvature. Now, let's simplify. Looking within this magnitude, we know that the magnitude of the tangent vector is a scalar value. So by the length of a scalar multiple property, we can pull that out. So pulling that scalar one over the magnitude of the tangent vector out to the front, all that's left within is the magnitude of the tangent vector, the rate of change of our unit tangent vector, with respect to the arbitrary parameter t, which is what we wanted. Woohoo! So this verifies our computation definition and allows us to conclude that therefore the curvature can be measured using the ratio of the magnitude of the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to that arbitrary parameter t divided by the magnitude of our tangent vector with respect to that arbitrary parameter t. And again, this is where kappa is a non-negative scalar. So we are now officially ready to go ahead and look at some examples using this newly verified computation definition.